On this week's episode, Peloton partners with Dick's Sporting Goods. And Dara Tresseda, Senior Vice President of Global Marketing, leaves Peloton and much, much more. Welcome to Pelo Buddy TV, a show for the Peloton community by the Peloton community. Here are your hosts, Amanda Siegel and John Pruitt. Welcome to episode 101 of Pelo Buddy TV, a show for the Peloton community. By the Peloton community, I'm John Pruitt, joined as always by my co-host Amanda Siegel. Hey now, Amanda. Hey John, how you doing? Hey. How has your week been? My week's been good. My week has been very good. Um, just you know, busy, and um, we're in the throes of a renovation on our home in Maryland, so uh, a little chaotic. But um, exciting yeah. and all good, so I'm not complaining. Um, and you know what? As long as I have my Peloton, I'm happy, and that that has not been touched. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm able to get my workouts in and do what I need to do, and um, and it's all been good. So um, yeah, had a good week, and um, you know it's just cold. It's gotten cold down in Maryland. That much I can tell you. Um, Definitely. It's, it's, you can feel it. I mean, the fall, it's amazing. September hits and the fall is here. How is your daughter doing at, uh, down in Miami? Have they been Well, actually, interestingly enough, Mark, yeah, so actually Mark is down there. Um, he escaped the renovation. Um, and um, yeah, actually, I'm glad you asked. Thank you. Um, for all our Florida, uh, for all our Florida folks that, that take the time to watch and listen to the show, we do hope that you're all okay. Mark said, I mean, we're South Florida, so um, he he did say, and on the East Coast, it, it was definitely terrifying. Tuesday mm. night, um, you know, we're on the 24th floor of a building. So it was, um, the wind was howling. We had some uh, pe- balcony furniture that was, you know, mis- displaced and um, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but, you know, for those on the on the West Coast, East Myers, uh, Fort Myers, gosh, it was not, not pretty. Um, I know that for yeah. some folks it was really scary. But yeah, um, Nicole, University of Miami being a little bit more inland, just got really heavy rain. They weren't affected too much, but That's it good. came from just like nowhere. Yeah, so he said it was a pretty scary, we, we'd never actually been down in Florida, you know, in the midst of a, a tropical storm season. or hurricane. Yeah, 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 so it was definitely different. So I decided to stay back and, and I'm here um, and we're, we'll kind of meet up at some point. But um, thank you for asking. Yeah. Yeah. All right, John. Well, we don't have much today, but we should get right into it. And folks, as you know, before we get started with the show, we always like to remind you how you can keep up to date with all of our content across all of our platforms. Every episode is released on our YouTube channel. Just hit the subscribe button at the bottom right hand side of the video and hit the notify button so that you never miss an episode. Yep. And of course, you can always listen to us. We're in traditional podcast format on all platforms. Just search Pello Buddy TV. Be sure to subscribe and hit notifications so you never miss an episode. And leave us a review. We love seeing a lot of the positive reviews that we get. And um, that also give us feedback for how we can improve the show, just like we've um, incorporated your uh, member picks into that part of the uh, that segment of the show. We love to... Um, you know, find ways we can improve for you at home watching and listening. Exactly. Absolutely. And folks, of course, we are on Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Just search for Pillow Buddy, like, follow us on all of those platforms for all of the latest news. And I guess, John, let's get on with the show. First, let's do a rundown of the latest Pillow news. All right. Well, kicking it off, uh, big news Thursday morning this past week, it was announced that Peloton would be partnering with retailer Dick's Sporting Goods to offer their equipment, including the original bike, the Bike Plus, the Tread, Guide, and other select accessories um, via uh, more than 100 retail Dick's locations um, in the United States and through their leading e-commerce platform on dicks.com and the rollout is slated to launch early this holiday season but there's already 
um, a little splash page on dicksportinggoods.com forward slash Peloton, which appears to show a list of various states that you can expand upon. And it'll list a few different stores typically for each state, which I would imagine would be the locations that would have actual Peloton products in the store. It doesn't specifically state, um, you know, which product, but looks like it's the initial list of participating Dick's locations that'll have Peloton product there. But um, outside of Peloton's own sales channels, Dick's will be the only retailer to carry this selection of Peloton's connected fitness equipment. And um, Dick's was quoted as saying, Peloton is a powerful brand with a very loyal following and a product mix that's compelling for any fitness enthusiast, said Will Swisher, who's the senior vice president of merchandising at Dix, uh, being able to offer Peloton to our athletes and to provide an in-store experience for them to see and test products gives us and Peloton extended reach into the fitness market. And I, I just think this is a win-win, obviously. The more exposure um, Peloton has at this point, you know, to really recover financially and grow is only gonna help them in the long run. And I, you know, Dix has such a huge presence, um, you know, Absolutely. retail footprint. Um, at least in the United States, that um, I think it only helps them. For, for yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, I have a huge Dix here in um, in Maryland, just down the street from me. Um, so it'll be interesting to see whether they're one of the stores that gets it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it just makes it makes you know it makes financial sense for them to get the product into the store, and as you said, have more people exposed to it and exactly. being able to jump on the bandwagon. No, very good, very good move um, on their part. I thought um, kind of came from like nowhere, uh, you know, but it. Was was it was nice to see that um yeah well there's con, you know continues to be some um shake up um back at corporate at corporate this past week we learned that yet another corporate peloton senior team member has left the organization and this time it is it, or it was senior vice president and global head of marketing dara tresida who had shared on her Instagram that she had accepted a position with Autodesk as chief marketing officer. Um, her message read, um, and, I, and I will go ahead and read it because I think it was just very thought, she put a lot of thought into what she said when she announced this on her social media. She said, to all the kind, talented humans, I have had the honor to serve alongside at Peloton and our phenomenal Peloton community Thank you for the ride of a lifetime. Together, we've opened new markets, launched four products, Bike Plus, Tread, Guide and Row, grown the member base from 2.6 million to almost 7 million, launched brand experiences in Peloton, with Peloton members from Beyonce to John John Florence, and most importantly, put our community, members, instructors, and team, the heart and soul of our brand at the center of it all. I'm proud of all we accomplished and will be cheering you on. As far as um, Autodesk's press release go, and so, so just to kind of, before I go into that, you know, a very thought, you know, thought out, well articulated um, farewell. I think for lots of people, she was a big presence. I mean, certainly one that we spoke about on the show many, many times. Um, yeah. She made it to some, you know, top lists of um, entrepreneurs and, and folks out there. And, um, you know, it was, I think it's, I think that probably is one of the biggest losses for Peloton. I mean, she hadn't been there that long, but, um, but still, I think that from my, from my perspective, I think it was a pretty, a pretty big loss. As far as Autodesk's uh, press release, it stated that she will be responsible for their global uh, marketing strategy and oversee the company's worldwide marketing brand um, and communications, um, their global demand generation and education business teams. Uh, so a, a pretty big title there as chief as chief marketing officer. Um, they're hoping that her experience will help advance Autodex's mission to empower innovators and achieve um, the new possible. Um, I tried to do a little bit of research and getting a little bit more into the organization to see what it really did. Um, and I, I, I didn't really come up with anything, but um, you know, good for her. And um, I, you know, I'm pleased with her, that, I'm pleased for her that she's obviously found something that she can grow in and maybe her potential at Peloton had 
stagnated and there wasn't much more that she could do. Um, I think they've gone quiet on global marketing. You know, they certainly haven't done as much as they used to. I think some of the markets they were looking at opening into, they've probably put a, you know, a serious halt and, and put the brakes on that. So um, She's yeah, definitely one of the more well-known um, high up executives at Peloton because I could see the comments people you know um, have commented saying how For much sure. they're going to miss her because I know last week we comment I can't even remember the person's name I'm sorry to say uh, I've never heard of Chief, yeah and, and, and the majority of the comments were who you know no one was aware but Dara <laughs> was really more of a face um, uh, public facing you know executive you know high up it seems like uh, there's a lot of people, you know, in upper management leaving with either chief and or officer in their title. So it's, yeah, I guess it's, it is common with, you know, structure, you know, management changes for, you know, from the top to the bottom, you know, with Barry McCarthy taking over from John Foley, uh, earlier in the year. So let's just hope they're, you know, they're still, they're still on the right path, on the right trajectory. Well, I think I kind of liked the idea that, that you know, with this announcement, because I was I was quite kind, of, kind of upset about it when I saw it, and, and a couple of people had mentioned me, said, did I know any more about it? Because as you said, she was definitely a face. Um, but yeah. then, you know, it kind of, the announcement of Dix complemented it. So you kind of felt, okay, well, it can't be too bad because they're doing this partnership with Dix. And I don't think Dix would have taken on something like this if they thought that it was, you know, a failing company and wasn't going to, um, you know, right. be out there. Out. So yeah. gave me a little bit of, of, of assurance that things were still going to be good. <laughs> yeah, at least, at least um, it's not all, you know, bad news or, you know, negative. Exactly. From the negative side. Uh, but exactly. moving on, we've got some new adaptive strength classes from adaptive coach Logan Aldridge. Uh, he just posted this past week. He's got, um, there's a new foundational section of adaptive strength in the adaptive strength training collection on the Peloton platform. There's eight classes, as Logan says, that are designed to introduce and educate proper technique and execution of foundational functional movement and how to safely modify and adapt. So he's got four standing adaptive classes that are 20 minutes each, um, which incorporate uh, push press, squat burpee, pull, foundations, then there's a foundations recap, uh, it's the fourth class. And then there's four seated adaptive classes, which are also 20 minutes each uh, that have push press, transfer burpee, pull, and then a foundational recap as well. Uh, in that section, so check those out. They're in the uh, the library currently. And with that, the question that is on a lot of folks' minds is, where in the world is Daniel McKenna? Um, and no, we don't have the answer, but we do know that he is off the schedule for the foreseeable future, um, with no word from Peloton or the Irish Yank himself. Um, we have gotten, um, or certainly Chris has gotten questions asking if we know, um, and since we seem to know everything, um, we, we, you know, it was just, it was just assumed that we would know what was going on. Um, but yeah. of course, we will share uh, with you all if we do hear anything and certainly, you know, respect his privacy um, for the time that he's away. Yeah, and for those folks that have gone on to the live schedule to kind of see, you know, when he's coming up, you won't see his name there. Um, and that's purely because the schedule does have kind of an auto for whoever's going to be on the list. So if somebody's not going to be there for the next two weeks or for however long the schedule, you know, gets released for, you won't see that on there. So for anybody asking, um, you know, that's the reason why his face, you know, his little thumbnail is not on the live schedule list of instructors for strength and tread, etc. So we just wanted right. to throw that out because there were some questions about that. Yeah, if he's not going to be, if he's not on the current schedule upcoming, he's not going to be in the drop down. Yeah. Which, which is which is normal. It's not having anything to do with his being yeah, out. Being yeah, being out. Being. Anyhow, exactly. uh, moving on to the next uh, artist series. So this past week's artist series was brought to Peloton by country singer uh, Kenny Chesney. So um, the classes, there's just two of them. They went down this past Wednesday, the 28th. There was a 30-minute Kenny Chesney run with Matt Wolpers and a 30-minute ride with Hannah Corbin. I have not um, done either of them. I I know a little bit of Kenny Chesney. I, I couldn't tell you a name title of one of his songs. 
Um, but this also ties in because he was also this week's featured guest on the Our Future Cell series, uh, which is the ongoing partnership with Ashton Kutcher. Um, and Dennis Morton, he was the um, this week's instructor on the episode. Um, it dropped on demand on the morning of the 27th, so it's there currently. Um, and you can also find all of the previous classes in the dedicated Peloton collection that we have on pelobuddy.com that I know Chris Lewis is very proud of, that he loves to compile his lists and collections uh, for you and to I think everybody find. really appreciates it because it is it's, much easier to find. Yeah. It's, it's the only place you can so go to outside to of Peloton.com. Right, right. So it is a great way for folks to kind of jump right into something directly from there. Well, the German community, um, John, have something very awesome to look forward to this um, this week. Um, and that is that Peloton are launching a special set of classes um, celebrating German Unity Day, which um, is observed tomorrow, October the 3rd. Um, so for those that are unfamiliar, Unity Day commemorates the um, reunification of the Federal Republic of Germany and the German Democratic Republic in 1990. So it's a great, you know, it's a big holiday for the Germans. And what Peloton have done is they have released five classes, including two all for one rides um, and a run. Sorry, so the two, one ride and one run are being released um, as part of this. So the ride will be at 11.15 a.m. Eastern time um, tomorrow, and there will be five out of the six cycling instructors participating. Um, Benny Adami, Mila Lazar, Charlotte Wiedenbach, Eric Yeager, and Cliff Dwenga. Myla Kind, who is not in the all for one, is off on PTO, but yeah. she has um, pre-recorded a 10-minute Unity warm-up ride, which actually drops at 11. So folks can jump on Myla's um, warm-up ride and then jump right into the um, the All for One. It is an encore, so it is not going to be them live in the studio with us at that same time. Um, they're okay. doing it as an encore, um, as an encore. Um, the Unity All for One run, which will be at noon Eastern, um, will be with Tobias Hines, Jeffrey McEachin, and Marcel Maurer. Um, there is also a 10 minute full body stretch with German newbie Asal Aryan and a 10 minute meditation with Nico um, Serini. So tons of exciting stuff for the German community that is just gonna drop um, this week. So and these are, all really in these are all in German? In German, yes, okay. yes. Because I know, I know Eric last week, he taught one of the October, if he had two Oktoberfest rides, one was 20 minutes in English, which I took, which was, which was fantastic. I heard, and I'm dying to actually do that one. In full I saw later, some great in full later hosen. I can only imagine so the, the, the possible chafing he had to experience afterwards. From, <laughs> those pa those shorts did not look like comfortable and breathable that he wore, but all for the sake that of Oktoberfest. Is hysterical, is right? Yeah. Right, exactly. It was fun. That's too funny. Well, we have. A possible could could Cody and Camilla be teasing a bad for a bad bunny two for one artist series? So they both posted just earlier this week, last week on social media. They both posted a video of them dancing together um, on a rooftop in New York City to Bad Bunny. So it started out with a little clip of of the artist like doing this hip gyration in concert and then it cuts immediately the immediately to them going back and forth doing the same sort of dance motions rhythms on the rooftop and Cody's video simply just had a caption that read start a rumor it might just be true <laughs> so i don't know what else what other indication we need so I've heard a little rumbling in the community that some folks were scheduled to ride with Cody um, or Camilla, I can't remember now, mm -hmm. in studio. Um, and there was like a change in schedule and, and one of 
I think it may have been the admins of one of the um, uh, one of the groups. Uh, I won't say which was asked to be in the studio. So who knows? Uh-huh. I mean, maybe maybe Bad Bunny will be in the studio too. Um, that much I don't know. I don't know any. Um, I'm speculating. Was here. it the admin um, of the Mila Mafia or the one of the admins uh, of the Boo Crew? Or you can't tell me? Like, okay, all right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's for offline conversation later. <laughs> <laughs> but um, right. but I think it's going to be an exciting Saturday at PSNY. I that that's much I that much I can tell you. I think it is going to be an exciting Saturday at PSNY. Saturday, October first. Um, I th- I believe so. Okay. So cool. just this past week, yeah, clearly, clearly, yeah. Nice. <laughs> we have to adjust our recording, um, <laughs> our recording information. Yeah. But um, yeah. Yeah, so so we'll definitely report on that next week once we get all the, um, you know, all, all the, the tea on what actually yep. happened. Exactly, exactly. Well, this past Thursday, September the 29th, um, at 4 p.m., Hannah Corbin and Maria, and Maria, excuse me, oh my goodness, I couldn't believe I said her name wrong, Mariana Fernandez um, hosted a Latinx and Hispanic Heritage Month virtual community event. Um, they shared how their cultural heritage and lived experiences are just part of their being and explained how the Latinx and Hispanic culture is really a collection of just diverse cultures that are all beautifully unique while still being able to share so many similarities. So the event was in honor um, of the Latinx and Hispanic community and basically just to celebrate one another. Um, They spoke about the inequities that are faced within um, the community when it comes to mental health, physical health, and and lack of representation um, in most major industries. So a you know wonderful wonderful chat that the two of them had together um, with community being able to ask questions and be involved. Um, so yeah, if you didn't catch that, I don't know if it's being saved for anybody to go back to. You did have to register um, this past week, um, and you got a link to access on Thursday afternoon. But um, I, I'm not sure if it's going to be. I'm sure if, we, if we're able to get a, a copy of that, it'll be up on pedobuddy.com for sure. So anybody that missed it will be able to see what was um, what was spoken about. But just yeah. tons of excitement from the from the Latinx and Hispanic communities. And um, I know that Mariana, I and you know her and I had chatted about it, and she was really excited to be you know featured on that together with Hannah. So with Hannah Corbin. So two new apparel drops this past week, and I know one was red hot with uh, a lot of the members. Uh, We had a new fall collection, which had a lot of black and blue tones uh, in it. And then Kendall's quote collection, which um, seemed to be flying off the shelves with everyone posting um, this past week once they got their order. Uh, But Kendall's collection is partnering with the brand Spiritual Gangster. Um, She's got a few different slogans, uh, Never Knocked Out, uh, the, the word knockout on one of the sports bras. Um, there's a couple sports bras, a tank top, two leggings, uh, a hooded pullover, sweatshirt, sweatpants, and then a knockout beanie, which is unisex, which is like a bright sort of lime green uh, colored. But everybody seemed to be placing their orders. I think you got some too, didn't you, Amanda? I did, and I'll give you guys a little hint, a little secret hint. Um, if you want to, if you'd like to get a discount um, on the apparel, if you head over to Spiritual Gangster and put in your email address, you will get a fifteen percent discount. If you put your text, uh, your phone number in, you can get a twenty percent discount on the exact same apparel. So they don't have everything. Spiritual Gangster have not released. Or, you know the entire collection there was a lot more on the apparel on the peloton apparel website but um 20 percent is 20 percent. it was a nice savings so yeah. i had gotten the blue the blues um gym set the sports bra and the pants um through okay. spiritual gangster and got a nice 20 percent discount and then i i got one or two other things off of the peloton apparel which i'm really like frustrated because i just had gone in last week um 
to try out the rower. I think I mentioned to you guys last week and um, had picked up a couple of the fall collection stuff. They really have some cool uh, new fall stuff. There's a blue bra top with a zip up, which is just gorgeous on um, with black leggings. And there was actually a, a great red, like a nice winter red color um, that I picked up. So I, oh, it's like, do I, I, I know I have enough. It's so hard not to buy. And they've changed a lot of their fabric, especially for the women's stuff, which I love. The new fabrics that they're using, they have like a lycra in them. So they really pull you in. Um, and it's it's really nice, really, really nice. Some nice um, dream blend stuff though, John. There was a dream yeah. blend sweater, I think, that they had in there. I did get um, the recent dream blend. It's, it's sort of like a maroon, a maroonish color yes. t-shirt. That's nice, and it doesn't nice. have it doesn't have it has minimal Peloton branding, so there isn't a, yeah. a big yeah. fat P or a logo on it. But yeah, super very comfortable. Very nice. Very nice. Love so that the dream, was a great. Love that the was dream a great. Blend. I know it's it's awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I got the blend. tank. The together I'm actually we... wearing my dream blend shirt and hoodie right now, actually. Oh, look, okay. Look at me. Look yeah, at me. the, um, the, there was a Together We Go Far dream blend that came out in like a, a deep purple. Long sleeve. Um, which was, which I got. No, it's mm. a tank. Oh, okay. It's a, it's a tank, but it's very cool. Very cool. And then, folks, there were um, two special birthdays this past week. Tobias Hines had his birthday last Tuesday. And Leanne Hainsby on Wednesday. So um, Leanne was actually on the schedule and rode live on her birthday, very early Wednesday morning. Um, it was a 7 a.m. Uh, British Standard Time, um, or mm. British Summer Time, um, which was 2 a.m. in the U.S. Um, and yes, John, I did get up to ride with her um, and was very pleased that I did. Members were very moved by her opening um, pre-show. Um, she had shared that she was not very excited about celebrating this 35th birthday um, yeah. after the untimely death of her very best friend. But she said that her Yes to You crew commun community and the love and support from the members made it so so much easier. Um, so I did um, get to be in the ride live um, at that ungodly hour of 2 a.m. Eastern time, but I got to celebrate my 20, uh, 2300 um, milestone. So 2300 milestone. Um, but you know what? To see her strength and dedication to the Peloton community was just amazing. Um, it truly, I mean, this has just been a really, as she stated, a very cruel year. This past year has been, um, you know, in, in her life. And um, yeah. it was lovely to see her smiling. It was a country, it was a country ride. And she really, from just being a little bit somber in the beginning of the ride to actually getting into it and just feeling we all changed our um, our thumbnails and we changed our hashtags to say happy birthday, Leanne. So um, happy, happy birthday to, yes, my all time favorite cycling instructor. Um, if you're watching, we love you and keep on sparkling. That's great. Well, I guess we're moving on into instructor in the news segment now. Um, and first up, Jess Sims, this past week, she was on the Today Show. Um, and it's it's great, I have to say, it's great seeing instructors when they make appearances now. It's great not seeing them on Zoom, you know, remotely. Yeah. Uh, the way they were for so long, the, the first couple of years of the pandemic. Um, you know, she was there in the studio at Rockefeller Center talking with Jenna Bush Hager and Hoda Kotb, um, all about uh, workouts that can help you burn calories and get stronger when you, uh, you know, are on a budget for time. So um, she talked about three, it was a quick, it was a three minute segment. So not a, you know, one of those shorty segments that they do on the Today Show. Um, but she talked about three different workouts. She went over a 15 minute and wrap uh, routine, which stands for as many rounds as possible. That involves three different moves. Um, and then she showed a 10 minute core um, EMOM, which stands for every minute on the minute. Um, and according to, to Jess, you really only need five to 10 minutes to sneak in uh, an effective core workout. You, um, she showed some oblique tuck-ups um, with shoulder taps. And then the third workout she talked about was a five-minute play 55, 
which is um, five minute workout. And by the end of it, you'll be doing 55 reps total. So it's made up of 10 pushups, a squat, nine pushups and two squats with eight pushups and three squats. And then you repeat that rhythm um, counting until you get to one pushup and 10 squats. Um, but it was, it was fun seeing there in person, you know, going through the motions and that, that, you know, three minute span. Yeah, awesome. And Alex Toussaint was featured, uh, well, he was the um, featured guest this past week on the Pivot podcast. Um, He chatted with Ryan Clark, Fred Taylor, and Channing Crowder um, on his life from military school to becoming a pretty awesome Peloton instructor. Um, He spoke about that pivotal moment when his father reached out and called him to tell him 22 plus years later, that he was proud of him. And he said that that validation was pretty much everything to him and um, really changed the trajectory moving forward. He could go from trying to make his father proud to accepting that he had made his father proud, which was yeah. um, pretty awesome to hear him you know, talk about. It was a very moving and raw chat um, that Alex gave. I, I love listening him to talk because he's so passionate um, when he talks about his path to lead him, you know, to to um, Peloton, which is just amazing. So, you know, folks, if you haven't had the chance to take a listen to it, definitely head over to um, to uh, uh, pelobuddy.com because there is a link there that you'll be able to catch or of course on any other um, podcast and whether you're an Alex fan or not I don't know how anyone could not be um, you know definitely make sure that you get to take a listen to that podcast it was awesome and Tune Day um, she was one of the keynote speakers recently at the Influence Greatness Conference which took place in Park City, Utah last week. It's dubbed as the world's most exclusive employee recognition and workplace culture conference. She was one of six keynote speakers, which included authors, uh, Dr. Brenny Brown, David Epstein, Erica Dewan, uh, Olympic gold medalist and world figure skating champion, Nathan Chen, and Mindy Cox, who was the host of the conference. And she's also the chief marketing and people officer at the hosting organization of the the conference, um, which her company is OC Tanner, which I was kind of looking into what their, um, what their tie in is to the, to conference and OC Tanner is a global leader in software and services that improve workplace culture, uh, through meaningful employee experiences. They have a, um, a cloud technology um, that is for employee recognition. It's an employee recognition platform that helps millions of people thrive at work. So I just thought that was kind of cool, um, you know, company software to have because I know we have something like that at my company that I work at, where you can you can send like high fives and recognition. Uh, but that's great. That's awesome. Yeah, she's very much been in the news this week. Um, she was also with Cody. Cody and her got to spend the evening together um, she's been busy. last week in, yeah, very, in correlation with the United Nations General Assembly. Um, and that was to pledge commitments to the Global Fund to fight AIDS. Um, so Tunde is an ambassador to RED, which is the non for profit organization that helps impact the injustice of global health emergencies and funds programs that saves lives. So the two of them got to, you know, rub shoulders and hobnob with um, some pretty powerful people. And that was pretty awesome. Yeah. And June Day, we, she was pretty, she had a busy week. She was also, in addition to being the keynote speaker and with Cody, she also attended an Elton John concert, which was outside on the lawn in front of the White House with a DT, um, which I looked on a DT's post, uh, a DT's post on Instagram, and she posted a couple of video clips, but it was really odd because there was no sound. So oh, I don't know. If, I don't know if she maybe muted they were the clips to? or if they got muted by Instagram or, or yeah, but it was just it was kind of funny because you see Elton John at the you know the piano playing along and I, I clicked to unmute it and it just said this video has no sound so I don't know probably. I don't know what she songs what songs he was playing yeah he, he played yeah yeah so our instructors have been very busy um, and I guess John that pretty much wraps up the um, news and instructor portion of the show and we will dive right into picks of the week and I'm going to have you kick it off 
All right, first up was submitted by Bob Ride 721. He submitted Jermaine Johnson's 20 minute Latin pop glutes and leg strength class from the 22nd. He said, just a fun class that is worth giving a try. And then next up, Darcy H79 submitted Rebecca Kennedy's 45 minute tread boot camp full body from also from the 22nd. Uh, she said, this one left me so sore. And then Tanner. Tanner Jalot submitted Kendall's 20 minute climb ride also from the 22nd as well. They said, push me to my limit in the best way. And I will hit it off with, yep, John Hosking. He did a dance music run on the um, 23rd. It was at 1 p.m. Eastern time. It was my pick of the week, of course, as well as, and I'm so glad to see this, hey, it's Eric M. Um, it was just filled with, you know, end of season Ibiza dance vibes. He had, um, he had, you know, some of the ones that you absolutely love to hear, Make Your Move by Anton Powers, Every Time We Touch, David Guetta, 9 p.m. Till I Come to ATB. I mean, it was just powerful, fun dance music. Every time a new one came out, I'm like, yeah, um, pushed me to uh, to really run hard. So that was an awesome dance music run if anyone's looking for something like that. And then um, Robin Arzan had her Latin heritage, or Latin heritage um, month celebration run. That was on the 24th uh, at 9 a.m. It was 30 minutes. And that was recommended by Anna La Pelotona and Laura Connerton. Um, they said Robin told the story about her parents coming to America and how they chi achieved a success. Um, this class took me back when I came to America not speaking English and I was totally devoted to learn and be successful. Same thing applied when I started my Peloton journey and after 96 weeks, I am stronger than ever. The music was out of this world, very inspiring. Thank you Peloton for including the Latino community and making us feel like home. What a beautiful um, uh, review on, on, that, on that ride. Um, and then Jen Sherman, her 45 minutes 80s ride from the 25th was picked by um, Luckiston. Um, they said fun, fun playlist and class. Yeah, it was good. It was, uh, you know, it's always fun when members are in the studio for Jen's classes. And I did that one live and I especially loved when she put on Brian Adams, Summer of 69. And she started singing along and I guess the, the crowd wasn't singing as loudly that maybe she wanted because she started saying, am I, why am yes. I the only person singing along right now? <laughs> um, but I did confirm from others that they were singing pretty loudly in there with her. That, uh, I actually had a friend. It. I actually had a friend. I actually had a friend in the class. She had traveled from um, uh, from the from the West Coast, from Seattle, and um, was in the class and said she thought she loved Jen Sherman before, but now she knows she loves them. <laughs> so so much to say. Um, so much to say was in the class. She said it was absolutely phenomenal, and the vibe was amazing. So yeah. so yeah, she, everybody was kind of singing along. And next up, we have, was submitted by Amar Jar, wait, I know this one, AMA Jar 3, Amar Jar 3. Yeah, Amma Jar, Amma Jar 3. Amma Jar 3. Submitted Bradley Rose's 30 minute pop punk ride from the 25th. They said one of his toughest yet. And then uh, the next one comes from Jason Denberg, Jason D. Uh, he submitted Callie's 30 minute bike boot camp full body, also from the 25th. Uh, Jay said, awesome bike sections and floor sections with four by three sections of deadlifts and squats and overhead press, renegade rows, then an imam, imam of four minutes of four to six human makers, which Callie instructs well, and a boat pose of bicep curls to end um, the minute, then finish with a floor section of bicep curls in a boat pose. Awesome class to work out, uh, full body as well. well. Thanks, Jason, for that one. And next up, Matt Wilpers, 45 minute progression run, also uh, from the 26th. And we got that one from Mandy Rose and Anna Putello. They said, amazing coaching, great music, perfect. 
And it looks like Amateur 3 was very busy on the platform. They had also recommended Hannah Corbin's 30-minute rock bar class. Um, that dropped on the 26th as well, 9.30 a.m. Eastern. Um, and they said, this one had me feeling the burn. Um, and then the next one, yeah, I had it as a pick of the week, Christine Derclay's 30-minute Power Zone endurance ride. It was from the 26th. It was her comeback ride after her surgery. And I'm not a huge, as you know, not a huge Power Zone rider. Me neither, um, yeah. But yeah, but Moms of Peloton put it out there. Melissa had said that we were trying to come together, you know, as a group and be there of support. And... Christine burst out crying. She got on the bike and she literally, she saw the hashtags, you know, everybody's hashtags. Um, she was so emotional that the PA was running in with a box of tissues. Um, it was amazing to just see how, what a strong, powerful woman she is. It, I mean, it was not easy. Her arm is obviously still in, in incredible, you know, pain. I'm sure you could just see the way she was moving it. Mm. Um, it, it was as, as somebody said, and I didn't say this, but she was open and honest about the, her accident um, and recovery and the messaging about setback due to injury was spot on. Um, and folks that had picked it was my buddy Roz Reich, 712, and Bordeaux Beagle, as well as, my, as myself, all chose it as picks of the week because it's one of those... You know, where you just need a pick me up and you just need to feel that maybe you're having a not such great day or you're coming back from an injury and are just feeling deflated in starting your progress from the beginning again. It was one of those that you can do it. The playlist was phenomenal. And, um, you know, every time I ride with her, I had come on here and say, I wish I did more with her. Um, I just wish there were more hours in the day, but she is one powerful woman. So huge congrats for that one. Um, and then Hannah Frankson. Hannah Frankson had a 20 minute R&B ride also from the 26th. Hokey AP and Dippin 22 said such a fun playlist. Awesome. And the uh, next one is, is my pick of the week. Uh, it was also submitted by USM Golden Eagle and it's Andy Spears 30 minute hit tread boot camp from the 26th. And this one uh, was just, it was all about the music for me that um, just really got me so fired up. So Andy had curated a playlist. Every song on it was a number one hit on the US Billboard charts from 1980 to 1989. So he had a good uh, mix across that decade. Uh, he kicked it off with Start Me Up by the Rolling Stones, which just just a great way to, to kick off the class. Def Leppard's Photograph, Love in an Elevator by Aerosmith, Burning for You, Blue Oyster Cult. He closed out the class with some Tom Petty, I Won't Back Down. It was just a fantastic, you know, 30 minute, it flew by. But um, I'm really a big fan of the high intensity, uh, this new format he's doing, this new boot camp hit format he's doing. It was really good. And then next up, Tobias Heinz's 30 minute Oktoberfest run, which was in German, from the 26th. Uh, this was submitted by Fleetwood Mom. And she said, Coach T's Oktoberfest was amazing from the special socks to demonstrating the shoe platter, plat, platter <laughs> on the tread. <laughs> Every minute was well thought out and full of energy. The playlist was awesome. Shout out to Country Roads. And you get a fun pretzel branch. It's funny because when we spoke about the um, Oktoberfest stuff coming up, I had reached out to Benny and Jeffrey to say, I don't know how to pronounce this word. We're going to be <laughs> talking about it. So we left it out last week. Um, and, and funny, they both came back and said, it's actually a Bavarian word. Um, uh, it's not a German word. And I guess Tobias has Bavarian, uh, ba you know, his, his background is Bavarian. Um, but it was funny that you tried to pronounce it. So I'm very proud of you <laughs> that you tried to pronounce it in that, um, in that pick of the week. A little and, bit, a little And bit. while we're on Oktoberfest, uh, Conrad Betts and USM Golden Eagle all submitted Eric's, uh, it's a t his English ride was 20 minutes. Um, it was a 20 minute Oktoberfest ride in English. Um, great class to go with Oktoberfest. He has a second Oktoberfest class in German as well. That one was 30 minutes and that was basically, he taught that right after the 20 minute English one. I did the one just in English um, and it was great. And, you know, he's, he's, very well versed in English. So, you know, he doesn't really yeah. 
you know, he's, he's bilingual. So um, I know a long time ago he did a pride ride, a 20 or 30 minute pride ride in English, but it's been a while since his last English class. I wish... I wish they would get the opportunity to do more in English because they to would really, you know, know. They, would, they would broaden their audience more. Um, yeah. So yeah, for sh- hopefully sure. that happens in the future. All right. And then um, uh, Dennis Morton, 30 minute uh, Our Future Selves, Kenny Chesney and Ashton Kutcher, which dropped on the 27th. Um, it was recommended by always a 406 girl, gal. Um, love the why message in this class and a takeaway for all. Uh, we also had Rad Lopez's 30 minute LHHM celebration full body strength class. It was in Spanish um, and that was on um, the 27th at 1030 Eastern. Um, Bridge Girl was the one that had recommended and they said great workout playlist and message. Loved it. And then Sam Yo, a, a 30 minute 60s pop ride it dropped on the 27th um, 2 p.m eastern uh panda's andy who is just adorable and is definitely um sam's go-to uh does all his stuff with sam um said awesome music and energy nice next up jess sims flash 15 from the 27th we got that one from banana foster and they said perfect way to end an outdoor power walk and then Cody's, next up, Cody's 30-minute pop ride from the 27th. Olinger, Debbie, and Ange M215 gave us that one. They said, Cody and pop is always a good time. And I did that one, you know, that was an evening class. It was at 7 o'clock um, Eastern time at night. I did that one the next day. And super fun. And one thing I've noticed, Cody's rides lately, his his commentary and little tidbits, Cody's Cody's on a very spicy kick lately. I'll just say that. So it's, it's been, <laughs> there hasn't been many dull moments and not that there's really ever any dull moments in Cody classes, but uh, they've been a lot of fun lately. So Cody's, um, Cody's been on, on point with the commentary and, you know, being awesome. Cody. Yeah. And then I will round it off uh, because it is my, my third and last pick of the week. Mariana Fernandez's 30 minute Latin yoga flow. It was in English. It was phenomenal. The music was amazing. Um, it is no secret that I have just absolutely been drawn to Mariana and her yoga, you know, her yoga um, practices. She is so much fun. And it's very nice because as most of you know, I, I you know, love Aditi and I work out with her a lot. There is, they're very different. Their workouts are incredibly different. So so Mariana just gives that, you know, that Mexican um, amazing, uh, what's, what's what I'm looking for, like enthusiasm in her classes. She loves to shimmy. She did tons of shimmying. The music was amazing. We were joking and said to her, we wanted something like Suavemente in there, which is one of my favorite um, Spanish songs at the moment. And she was like, no, there's going to be no Suavemente in there. <laughs> but her playlist was just, um, she had Bad Bunny, she had Prince Royal, Luis Miguel, she threw in some Mark Antony. Um, she had some, you know, really good um, old school Latin music, which was amazing. So for a fun yoga flow that was easy, I believe it was intermediate level, but it was a pretty easy flow to do. Um, it was amazing, absolutely amazing. So definitely take that one. And I guess okay. that wraps up the picks of the week. Well, it was a slow news week. We still had enough to share with you guys. Um, so yeah, so for me here in Maryland, as always, thank you so much for taking the time to jump on, whether it be on podcast or on YouTube and get to see the incredible graphics that Chris Giles puts together for the show. Um, thank you so much for watching and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Bye for now, everybody. Yep, and for me here in Michigan, Thank you for tuning in, watching and listening. And as always, we will see you on the leaderboard. Thank you for watching Pillow Buddy TV, your source for everything Peloton. By the community, for the community. Work out with us using the Pillow Buddy TV leaderboard tag and find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Pillow Buddy. Don't forget that we have a podcast available so that you can listen to us while on the move. Just search for Pillow Buddy TV on any major platform and hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode.